topic is, how do I create a correct claim of the live life? What does the word correct mean to you? What is your closure on the word correct? How many viewers have actually looked it up, parsed it, and gone to the trouble of creating a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, finite mean closure for the word correct? A lot of people go around talking about, you're not correct. This is correct. Correctness is coming. Well, it's a simple question. What is your closure? on the word correct what is your finite mean of it that is that can be found in your correct sentence structure dictionary share it with us because i'll bet dollars to donuts you don't have one i can say that because i've spoken with hundreds of people all over the earth all different uh levels of knowledge in this construct and the vast majority of them do not have dictionaries have not created their own dictionary and have no clue what the word correct actually means. But yet they walk around using it as if it's some sort of weapon, which it's not. Well, I mean, you can use it as a weapon. I choose not to use it as a weapon. Um, so you just look at the particles of the word co and wrecked. Basically, to paraphrase, it just means together along the, a straight line, which is the geometric line established by two position loadial fact phrases for the claimant's knowledge of the facts. Correct line established, put the verb in, now you can make your claim. <clears throat> so, now... Now that we've established and given a little bit of closure of what correct is, how do you create a correct claim of the live life? Well, the most obvious closure to that, I can give it in 15 seconds or less. Get closure on correct sentence structure, communication, partisan syntax, grammar. That's how you create a correct claim of the live life. It's that simple. I can pretty much, by the people who are commenting here and what I've seen, I can pretty much guess that no one here, at least no one who's commented, has closure on the grammar. There are some that appear to be close, but I don't know for sure because they and I have not done a one-on-one -on -one video consultation. And so therefore I have no idea, you know, really. That's why I direct people towards that video consultation. Is If I could do everything face-to-face, -face, I would much rather prefer that. Rather than, you know, trying to have a conversation through a comments field or something. No, 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 no. Let's step up face-to-face, eye-to-eye, you know, man-to-man, -man, whatever, and have the conversation then. That's always my first choice. But, you know... The earth is a big place, so the second choice is the video consult. And that's another vetting process on my part. If I offer you a video consult, when, when you are proceeding down a certain conversational path, and I offer you a video consult once, twice, even three times, and you don't address it, you don't accept it, you don't even send me an email, that tells me a lot about your character. As far as learning correct sentence structure goes. Because the ones that are serious about it will have no qualms about stepping out of the shadows into the light onto the geometric level plane field of communication. And those that don't accept it, that's their choice. But again, it's a vetting process. It tells me a lot about you, your character, so to speak, in a fiction sense. So how to create a correct claim of the live life? Obviously, the grammar. you got to have the grammar in order to do that. You got to have closure on the grammar. You have to have closure on correct sentence structure communication for the of the with the by the. Parse. You got to know how to parse. You got to know how to create consistent closure on the finite means of words. And you got to know how to syntax. You got to know how to syntax on the spot, lickety split. 
and give closure on those syntax values you're banking. Those are banking mechanics right there, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to syntax and give closure to the value you're syntaxing. When you deposit something into your bank account, do you know what it is you're depositing in there or do you just throw stuff in there? Like, I don't know, like, hey, I don't know what this is. Just throw it in the account. Who knows what it is? No, you don't do that. You find out what it is. Oh, this is a lid to a candle. Let's bank that. You have to know what it is you're banking, whether it's an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, past tense, future tense, position, loading fact, conjunction, whatever. You have to know the value of the thing you're banking. So you got to know those three things. The three elements of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. In order to create a claim of the live life. What is a claim of the live life? We have a few members on here. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, just because you're a member doesn't mean that you have a certain level of knowledge or anything like that. It just means that you value what I do and you've donated. You put some sort of donation towards it to show me that you value what I do. It has nothing to do with knowledge level. So what what is a claim of the live life? What, what could you some, I mean, what are you claiming? You're claiming a live life. Well, what is it? Does anybody know? Can anybody put into words in 200 characters or less, which is the limit on the, the chat, uh, the character limit on the chat, Anybody care to take a, a shot at telling me what a claim of the live life is? Maybe that should have been a choice. Explain what a claim of the live life is. I bet not two people know what that is. Not too many people know. To be used as a shield when needed against being treated wrong in the fiction world. Um, in the most general, expansive guess sense of the word, maybe, but that's not what a claim of the live life is. It's not a shield. I mean, if you hold this, if you hold a claim of the live life up, a bullet's still going to go through it. It's not a shield. That's not what it is. No. A live life claim is a multi-witness verification. The author is as a fact alive. Correct. Die. And there we go. There we go. And. I would like to introduce everyone to Colon Dai, Colon Cameron, who's actually one of my best students this year. Um, he's very far advanced in quantum grammar and correct sentence structure. Um, he's very intuitive. He questions everything, which is an admirable trait to have in this day and age where you just don't accept people's word you have to certify everything and he understands that and so much honor and grace to die and thank you for coming on here and that's what a claim of the live life is it's three or more witnesses coming together to certify that you are a living breathing creature uh jonathan says proof of the claimant's factual life and breathing condition of state which has the potential to debunk the presumed indentured servant debtor status of the fiction birth certificate. Well, Jonathan, that's if you want anything to do with the birth certificate. Myself, personally, I have nothing to do with the birth certificate. It's not mine. It's not my contract. I didn't autograph it. Um, and so therefore I don't have anything to do with it. It's goofiness as far as I'm concerned. Parse syntax grammar is to correct laws and empowers you to identify fraudulent grammar, prove the fraud, and protect one's family. Catherine says, Parse syntax grammar is to correct laws. Well, if you want to correct laws, 
as far as I'm concerned, I don't cognize any laws. Laws are a fiction. Um, I just go with correctness. If I ever use the word law in my correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal, vessel, court, venues, it's to refer to the fiction side of things. There are no laws in my construct or biosphere. It's literally based on rule one, rule equal, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal, uh, honor, grace, geometric level, plain field. That's what it is. I don't use the word laws or anything like that. Now, there are other mechanics, specific mechanics, that I will explain in generalities. You must have closure on postal mechanics and how they work, because you are going to be putting stamps on your claim of the live life. If you have closure on the grammar, then that would also mean that you must have closure on the flag and how to use that flag with correctness. And no... I am not talking about getting someone else's autograph or thumbprint on your claim to the live life. I'm talking about you taking authority over your own construct and you being the authority of that grammar in joinder with that Title IV flag. That's what I'm talking about. Meaning, at the bottom of your claim of the live life, there's a copyright copy claim section. For the copyright and copy claim, of this live life claim is with the perpetuity by the Jason Knight from Matthew Colin Glass period. I'm the copyright copy claim holder of my live life claim. No one else. I'm not giving up my live life to some other Yahoo. Okay? It's not going to do it. I mean, if you want to do that, that's your choice. If you want to pay, you know, 250, 300 bucks or whatever it is for a claim of the live life, with someone else taking copyrights of your live life claim, that's up to you completely. That's your choice. As adults, we can all make those types of choices. I choose not to. So anyways, closure on postal mechanics, closure on the flag. Um, in my claim of the live life, I claim facts on there. In other words, I claim the date that I physically was born onto earth i also claim the live life vessel from the point of conception i also claim mother because i can certify that i don't claim father because you can't really i can't really certify that i claim gender because i can certify that i don't claim eye color hair color height weight I don't claim any of those things because those things are constantly shifting and changing. One day I weigh 210 pounds. Another day I weigh 200 pounds. Um, you know, 10 years ago, I was six foot tall. I was a little bit over six foot. I might be shorter now. I don't know. My eye color changes. Some days it's hazel. Some days it's brown. My hair color has changed. It used to be really dark brown. Now it's not so much. In other words, I just claim facts on the claim of the live life. I also have DNA on there, which, you know, can be fingernails, can be hair follicles. When you use the hair follicle, you have to make sure that it's that it has the root on it, okay? You can't just clip off hair because that's not DNA. The DNA is at the bottom of the hair, just so you know that. Some people... You know, but there are other ways of doing DNA that I'm not going to mention in this live stream. But those are the safest ways that I just mentioned right there. Um, you know, you know, you got to have to have postal mechanics, postmaster mechanics, how to autograph your name, your thumbprint. You would put your thumbprint on there and a physical uh, like, like a photograph. Of your face. For credentialing purposes. A lot of people will use the the picture that they have on their passport or fiction driving license. Um, the three witnesses on the live life claim must be live life claimants. 
Of course, goes without saying, they must be live life claimants in order to witness you as a live life claimant. At the bottom of the live life claim, you would have an autograph section where all three witnesses and live life claimant would autograph and date the live life claim. At the top of the live life claim, you would have the vessel number, which is the registration number that you would get from the post office, uh, the vessel name, which is claim of the live life, vessel date, the date that it uh, was pushed off into the sea of space. And then, excuse me, on the back, you flip it over, top center, another, you know, postage stamp would go there, autograph over it, thumbprint over it. And then the uh, registered receipt that you get from the post office, I took mine and glued it on the back, physically glued it on the back of the live life claim. And you notice in those registration slips there are boxes on there where you write in the name and address of, of the the claimant i break the boxes where i put correct sentence structure in the boxes i choose to break are broken there are some uh, boxes i don't break uh, but that's up to your discretion your knowledge level so that's how you create a correct claim in the live life of course the most important thing is closure on the grammar the most important thing so we've gone through and it's very similar if you didn't notice with the live stream i did a week or two ago about how to create a correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar uh the psychology of creating a document contract postal vessel core venue because the claim of the live life is that it's a document contract postal vessel core venue So then after you create a correct claim of the live life, oh, wait a minute. I have one more thing I have to talk about here. Uh, I would be negligent if I didn't mention this. The interesting thing about the claim of the live life is that you don't have to know the grammar in order to have a correct claim of the live life. But how would you know it's correct if you didn't have closure on the grammar? For example, if you have children, if you have closure on the grammar, you can create a correct claim of the live life for them with three adult witnesses who are claiming the live life, uh, who are live life claimants, autographing the claim of the live life. You would take authority, if you're the parent, would take authority over that claim of the live life. You would autograph the stamp. You would be postmaster, judge, and bank banker of that document, that claim of the live life. And you would be the copyright copy claim holder of that claim of the live life until such time as your child is old enough to take authority over their own claim of the live life. Then you would create another one for them. Or they would create another one if they want to. Maybe they don't want to. Maybe they don't want, to, don't want to have anything to do with it. Well, then that claim of the live life would then become null and void by their choice because contract is by consent, ladies and gentlemen. So it works the same way for you. If you don't have closure on the grammar, if you find someone that has the time to help you create a claim of the live life, then uh, and they have closure on it, they can help you create a claim of, the, claim of the live life that is correct if you trust their judgment. The thing is, is you won't really be able to use it because how would you be able to use it if you don't know the grammar? So that's kind of like a, a double-edged sword there. You know, <laughs> people don't understand this. If, if this was actually like a money grab for me, I could charge people for claim of the live lives, you know, because I have people, hundreds of people emailing me. Can you help me with your, the claim of the live life? If I just went off of those emails alone, I wouldn't have time to eat, sleep, or, or anything. 
that's why I always say learn the grammar yourself so you can do it yourself because I only have so much now space just like anybody else. And I do have to keep a roof over my head and feed my family. But I totally unequivocally disagree with anyone who change, who charges money for a claim to the live life. It's not, for me, it's not correct with those principles of rule one, rule equal, honor, grace, peace, and neutrality. So if you don't have closure on the grammar, you can have someone else create the claim of the, claim of the live life with you or for you. But the thing is, you won't be able to use it. In order to use it, you'd have to then get someone who knows the grammar to pretty much take power of attorney over your affairs to do that. Now, while I do not agree with charging money or a value for claim the live life. I don't agree with that at all. Um, if you want someone to create a document contract cult of Vessel court venue for you, if you want someone to do a case for you, that is going to cost you. That is going to cost you because it takes twice, if not three times the amount of energy to create a correct sentence structure document case than it does for just a plain English adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, legalese, babble uh, document. So if that's your, your volition is to have someone syntax a document for you for your court case or whatever, in order to do it safely, they would literally have to take over your case for you. Just like if you hired an attorney or something like that, they would have to do it. And on top of that, it's way more work and it's way more danger, way more risk for the person that would be taking your case. I think people get the wrong impression in general of correct sentence structure. They think it's some sort of magic bullet or something, but it's not. It has to do with volition and it has to do with knowledge. And in the end, you can be 100% correct with your grammar, with your volition. And in the end, the fiction system may still decide to come in and smash you down. One must always be prepared for that. I, uh, I basically tell people, if you're going to do something with this, how much of a bloody nose are you willing to take? What's the worst possible thing that can happen to you as a result of you doing this? Whatever that is, are you okay with it? Because if you're okay with it, then you can proceed. But if you're not okay with it, don't do it. Because you're going to be in a world of hurt, probably, if you go into it with that mentality of fear. There can be no fear when you're using this. It's not going to turn out well, basically. All right, so that was a pretty good member subscriber stream. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Wait, let's check back and see if natural, the natural Mid-South responded to my comment and they didn't cool whatever all right members anybody jonathan todd says loud and clear what's loud and clear jonathan does anybody have any grammar questions any questions about anything else you'd like me to talk about? Oh, oh, almost forgot this one. Here's an announcement I'd like to make. According to YouTube statistics, this channel has finally uh, broke 5,000 subscribers. This channel was very slow and growing. In the first year, it had like 100 subscribers. Second year, 200 subscribers. And then after that, it, it, you know, went, it grew very fast up to 4,000 or so. And then, um, but then it sort of leveled off. 
it sort of leveled off. But finally, we got to 5,000. I appreciate that. For me, that's a milestone. Pretty happy about that. And in celebration of that, I have decided to continue the podcast for the Quantum Grammar shoot. But it's not going to be on Anchor. It's going to be here on this channel. If you noticed in my playlist section, which I highly recommend everybody check out, there's a playlist on there for the Quantum Grammar shoot. That's where you can find the latest editions of the podcast from this point forward. So I have the 100th episode on deck, ready to publish. Not sure when I'm going to publish it, but it's ready to go. That'll be coming out. You can find it on that playlist. It'll be a premiere and everything. And then from then on, I'm going to try and do it maybe once a month if I can. If I have the now space to do it. Continue it here on this channel. And in this latest, in this 100th edition of the of the podcast, I said, I think I said the word shit in there a couple times. And YouTube, YouTube wouldn't let me monetize the video or limited the monetization because of that, which is funny. So, you know, it is YouTube's best, so I'm going to respect their conditions. And I'm going to try not to say that word. Sometimes it just comes out, though. I'm not generally a, a person who swears or cusses or uses foul language. If I use it, it's usually for a purpose. For emphasis. I want, to, I want to be respectful of YouTube. And uh, I think a lot of people take presumptions in, in that category. Like people who criticize Facebook and YouTube and say that, oh, we're being, we're being shadow banned and blocked and things like that. Well, I bet those individuals who complain about that stuff never read the terms and conditions of the vessel that they're using. Much in the same sense that this CPAS C treaty has my terms and conditions on it, as well as my drove timelines on it. And I carry this everywhere I go. Now, I used to wear it, but I don't wear it anymore. I mean, sometimes I do, depending upon what venue I'm walking into. Uh, but most times I don't wear it. And the reason is that when I used to wear this all the time, it was because the grammar, the knowledge, hadn't hadn't crystallized itself yet, hadn't solidified itself yet in my psyche. So therefore, I had to announce it everywhere I went. But since the grammar has crystallized and materialized and solidified in my psyche and in my heart, it's in me. So I don't have to wear it on me anymore because it's already in me. And I can bring it out anytime. So that's why I don't wear it everywhere I go only when necessary. So when you see people walking around wearing that, it usually, not all the time, but it usually means that they're not totally 100% confident in their closure on the grammar. Not all the time, just sometimes. Going once, going twice, anyone have a question, Again, if I didn't mention this at the beginning of the stream, I'm very thankful for any super chats or super stickers that anyone wants to send if you value what it is that I do. Those things help, every little bit helps tremendously to keep this vessel uh, floating and healthy. And that you value what I do, I'm giving you knowledge, you in turn are giving me a value back. That's called rule one, rule equal. That's why I do that. 
if you're interested, if you're serious about learning correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you can email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. You can find that email address in the description of this video and apply for a correct grammar workshop. Um, but who reads a description of videos anyways? I bet 9.9 .9 out of 10 people don't read descriptions of videos. Myself, I always read descriptions of videos because I like to know what it is I'm getting into before I get into it. Do you use your CPAS when you travel? Of course I do. Without a passport. No. No, I use it with a passport. Do you know what a CPAS is? It sounds like maybe you don't know what a CPAS is. The CPAS is towing this as a salvage. Okay? And I've paid my fee for freight to do so. In the fiction, there's a birth certificate. In the fact, there's a claim of the live life. In the fiction, there's a passport. In the fact, there's a CPAS C treaty. You see how that works? Di Cameron asks, why three witnesses for the live life claim? Specifically, die. I've never been given closure on that. Uh, David Wood Miller once told me three. One is opinion, two is certification, three is authorization. And he went into a whole rhetoric about the number three and how powerful it is. And I see evidence that three is powerful in that, like the three day rescissions uh, thing. I don't know why it works the way it works, but wow, does it work. For example, if you get, I got to be very careful with what I say here. If you get some sort of correspondence from an interloper through your mailbox, if you send it back to them within three days, within 72 hours, saying that the name is wrong, it's an incorrect name or, or, or a fictitious conveyance of grammar, whatever you want to say and you send it back to them, they will send you another correspondence. And if you keep sending it back within 72 hours, it'll either keep going back and forth or they'll just vacate. It'll go away. It will never go into a foreign vessel and dry dock. I've done this. I've experimented with it. The three-day rescissions is very powerful. And so I connect that in with the claim of the live life. Three, at bare minimum, you must have three witnesses. It's like the, the trust law thing. Also, very powerful stuff in the fiction and in the fact. And so that that's my guess as to how that works. I was never ever told specifically by David Wynn Miller or by anyone else why that the, that is what it is. Those are my own guesses. And from my own success with the grammar, I'd have to say there's some validity to it. So, can you use your old passport with a stamp or do we have to get a new passport with our live life name? Brad, that's entirely up to you, how you want to do it. I'm not going to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. Brad, also, um, I'd be very careful with that until you have closure on the grammar as to how you do things like that. Is your own stamp that I saw on your palette, is that your own stamp? My own stamp. It's a Red Fox stamp that I paid that I paid for, yeah. And I autographed over it. I canceled it out, yeah. If one is their own witness and is competent to give closure to this fact, then why would one need other witnesses? If I possess my life, then who is it to be able to say otherwise? Well, Jeff, are you asking me to take your word for it? That's like you telling me 
that you saw a UFO. Well, I possess the knowledge that I saw a UFO. Well, if it's important for you to certify that to me, you need some other kind of proof. Then you need to bring in, oh, well, this is my friend, Sally. She saw it too. Oh, so now we have two witnesses. Okay, that brings more validity. Then you bring in someone else. This is Bob. Bob saw the UFO too. Oh, okay. So now three people saw the UFO. It gives more weight to your live life claim. I mean, you're more than welcome to create a claim of the live life with just you as a witness. But I challenge you to use it and see if you're successful with it in the quote unquote real world. It's great to certify facts for yourself if you're the only one that you're contracting with. But if you're going to contract with other people, you need a little bit more than that. And that's the psychology of this grammar. I don't ask anybody to take my word for anything. Everything that I say on here, you can look it up. And if I don't know it or can't certify it, like I did, you know, for the three witnesses or whatever, I say it. So that's pretty much what you're asking everyone to do is to take your word for it, even if they don't know you. If that makes sense. Is the Hawaiian language void of the Babel? Jonathan, well, I don't know Hawaiian language. I took the word kuleana from that, but other than that, I don't know it. My best guess would be pretty much every single language on planet Earth is adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babel. And correct sentence structure is not a language, it's a grammar. It's a grammar of fact where you can take other languages and transpose them into correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Like my native tongue is plain English, so that is the language I use with correct sentence structure grammar. See, these are questions like this that people don't people don't actually know what correct sentence structure is. Even high level students will still don't know what it is. No matter how much we talk about it, it's very strange. There's like some sort of cognitive block there. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Holy cow, we're over an hour. Members, you can uh, access this live stream for two weeks uh, if you want to study and check it out after that. Thank you, members, subscribers, viewers. I hope the Natural Mid-South caught some of this. And... Uh, We'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks. Thank you.